Welcome to the Tony Awesome Fishing Show. Now then, we often get asked on our many emails, I want to start sea fishing or I have been sea fishing and I get seasick. Been there, done it. Not on this one, but got the t-shirt. Fortunately now, as I have my own boat, I don't get, I'm not gonna say I don't get seasick. I don't get seasick because I have the keys to the boat and if I feel queasy, I go in shore. If you're on a charter boat, you're stuffed. You're Well, the worrying thing about seasickness, in rough weather it is, oh my God, you think you're gonna die. And then even worse than that, as the saying goes, that's when it really hits you because you realize it's so bad that you're not gonna die. Well, hopefully not anyway. Anyway, seasickness, or mal de mer as it's known, can strike any human being anywhere. Now, it has been proved by scientists that the human being does not exist that cannot be made to be seasick or seasick sick by enough shaking about. It's caused by a sort of a balance of the inner ear, a bit like what they used to discover is called Menier's disease. It's an imbalance of the inner ear, and you can get pills for it, and you can get those little wrist tabs. They're all worth investing in if you want to go fishing. The main thing is, don't go fishing in rough weather. Cancel out and go when you want to enjoy it, because even if the fish is bad, and guys, I've been here at 55 odd years now, I've never had a good day's fishing on a really rough day, ever, ever, ever. Maybe one blue shark that just grabs hold of a bait. So, I don't go fishing when it's rough. Easy peasy that one, not so. <laughs> it's a no brainer, isn't it? Anyway, I recently had this last year in uh, Ireland, man, a shocker. Well, the weather was horrific. I did manage to get a few fish in rough weather, but the big thing is, pop a couple of tabs the night before and you can get through the day. And this is the sort of fishing I had. So this particular day was extremely rough and who better to get to mix up that strong smelling stinking chum for a shark drift than Shawnee, the bait guy and the chum guy and the general dog's body aboard the boat, Mark Allen's boat and Cork McSherry. He's a good lad old Shawnee, he knows what it, it takes He's going to put the rubby dubby, which is a mixture of bran and mushed up fish. He's going to hang it over the side. Well, what they do here, they barely hang it in the water. Watch. I put it completely under the water, but they put it so it, it just dabbles itself on the surface. And the rocking of the boat in rough weather doesn't wash it out too quickly. Anyway, GP hooks up with a shark on my patented sliding float rig. A nice blue shark battling away there. So even on a rough day, as I mentioned earlier, I've never caught much more than a shark, and that's indeed what I had on this day, which doesn't particularly look rough, but as far as I'm concerned, it was a big swell on there, and you can see the line pouring off the reel. Decent shark, this one, and that's what it's all about, putting the time in, but I wasn't gonna go out on an extremely rough day. This was sort of after the storm had gone through, little was I to know there was another storm on the way, even worse than this. This is what we call a residual swell left over, but it's enough to make people seasick. Sometimes you can be seasick in an oily type of swell rather than a big crashing waves and howling gale. Anybody can be seasick, I would always advise. Pop a couple of tabs, wherever you want, go and see your chemist, your pharmacist, uh, and basically you've got some other well, I'll give, you, I'll give you a little tip in a minute on what to do and what not to do, having been there over the side of the boat. Let's just see if we get this shark up first. Now what the guys have got, they've got a tailor here that's going to lift the shark out by the tail. But watch what happens when Mark gets hold of the trace. I battled this shark, got it to the boat. Quite a decent sized blue shark. They've got the tailor over there. That's a yellow implement you just see in the corner of the picture, bottom right hand corner of the picture. There's my green strimmer line, which I use for a rubbing leader. Just as Mark gets hold of it, can you believe it? That's right, the shark spits the bait out. However, it wasn't long before one of the other anglers on there got another blue shark. They got the tailor on it, lifted it over the side, and what they're going to do now is uh, measure it out, check the sex on it, and put a tag in there. Now, these blue sharks are really tough.
tough creatures. There's the tag. It's a dorsal tag. Done this many a times. I've had a few recaptures as well with the old Irish tourist board, not the tourist board, fisheries board, I believe it was. They used to do these tags, Central Fisheries Board. I don't know what they call themselves now, but they still do the tags. And Mark Gannon, who runs the fishing boat over there in Cormac Sherry, I can't tell you, must have tagged hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sharks and had a lot of recaptures. And once the tag's done, and once those photographs are done, that's when you get the chance to basically get it back in the water, drop it down, and it swims straight away. So, some basic tips on how to avoid being seasick. First of all, what I do is you can go in and get various brands of uh, tablets for anti-motion or anti-seasick tablets. Go into your pharmacist, and the ones I take, look, you know I'm not going to mention the name, you know me, they're not paying me, why should I give them any publicity? I take one the night before and two in the morning before I leave. Not every trip, just when I know it's going to be a little bit rough, a little bit lumpy or a swell. That sort of calms you down and just makes you a little bit drowsy, so watch when you drive, read the instructions, it's sort of idiot proof, the instructions are in the packets, but they do help. You can also get a wristband that has a little bead on it and pushes on a certain secret spot on your wrist here. That is a motion sickness. Now listen, I've tried them, it didn't work. My daughter goes in coach trips to get seasick or car sick. Seasick in a coach, Graham? Speak English. She gets motion sick in the back of the coach, so she takes these. Takes them? Stop it, Graham. She doesn't eat the bands. She puts these bands, motion bands, on her wrist and she swears by them. That's a couple of tips there for you. Do not go out on the beer the night before. That is a classic. I've seen it so many times, it's unbelievable. If you fill up on curry, beer, lager, whatever, shorts, spirits, it's coming all the way back up. And trust me, it won't taste anywhere near as good coming back up as it did going down. Now here's something different. This is often a species mistaken for shark. As you see the fin flip-flopping on the surface, has another fin underneath its belly, one on the top, one on the bottom and it flops backwards and forwards, it's called a sunfish. And Sean is trying to net this one so we can show it to the camera, but as we get the boat closer and closer, you can see the fin there at the top and the bottom. They're the most peculiar creature. I have actually caught one on a rod and line, and I think it weighed 73 pound four ounces. And there's a picture in one of the books I had somewhere, called it on bream tackle. Anyway, Mark decides to scrap the uh, shark in and go wrecking, you can see there, big hump of a wreck there. So that was, you know, decent place, decent mark. Could there be some stuff there? Who knows? Down goes the anchor, down goes the chain. We were going to give it a shot. It's worth a try, even in rough weather. And sometimes people get sick at anchor because it's a totally different motion. So with the anchor down, Sean's in a fish on the front. This other angler's got caught in a snag. And yes, it's the wreck. And this is how Mark has set up a wreck, standard practice, wind the line round and round. A piece of wood like this, especially with braid, don't even think of pulling it with your hands, even with gloves. You wind it and wind it, and then you pull hard up when you've got all the stretch out of it, pull it right back up high, and you should, or you will eventually, be able to break that line out and start again. Another couple of tips if you want to avoid being seasick. Don't go down in the cabin. You might have to go down there to use the toilet if they've got a toilet. If you go down in the cabin, it does something with the inner ear, the imbalance, the sort of pressure inside a covered, covered space will upset you and you'll find if you're down there, chances are pretty good you're going to be seasick if it's rough, if you're prone to being seasick. The other thing is, don't get it in your head that you're going to be seasick. Oh my God, I know I'm going to be seasick on this trip. You've got to think, as stupid as it sounds, happy thoughts. I'm going to be seasick. No. Just try and think positive, if you can. The main ones stay out in the air, out in, on the deck, in the open if you can, and concentrate on looking at the horizon. Now, I get queasy, not necessarily sick. Many times I see, because I'm like this, I'm looking down camera lenses all the time, and I suddenly go, ah, oh, am I feeling queasy? Or is breakfast coming back to revisit me? I'll put the camera down, and I'm afraid I don't fit fish at all or film. So, few tips there hopefully that will keep your breakfast inside your stomach 
and give you some fun filled fishing days because once you get it through your head and you start getting good trips in you'll realize the little tips all band together and you get some good fishing and when you get good fishing you will go again here's shawnee's ling that's come up got that one on a piece of mackerel now ling are a really good eating fish they're bottom dwelling species but they will come off the bottom of the seabed to grab something and if you look up the top of his trace in front you can see what we call muppets over here like a plastic squid and a piece of green tube so green guys this is what they're using in ireland it's all the rage a green color is what is catching the ling over there a mark's boat out of court mcsherry got two boats there charter boats he specializes in wreck fishing and reef fishing and you've got a good chance of catching plenty of eating fish with him because ireland is so prolific it's unbelievable this is a nice sized ling most of the ling come off the wrecks but you can get them over rough ground inshore this was way offshore about 15 16 miles out over one of the wrecks and there's shawnee showing off the fish a very good angler learning fast catching lots of fish dead keen and here he is with another species this time a bit more unusual a really big bull hus and the bull hus are related to the dogfish in fact they're called the greater spotted dogfish as opposed to the lsd or lesser spotted dogfish and of course for people in other countries they do look like sharks it looks a bit like a nurse shark when i've been abroad but you know we've had nurse sharks to 300 pounds you generally would call a big bull hus like this about 10 pounds would be a nice fish a nice fish anything 8 to 12 pounds is a good fish for a bull hus now then your culinary requirements for the day yes what are you going to eat when you feel absolutely wretched well, I strongly suggest that you do eat on what's called the little and often basis. Don't go with a plated roast dinner and some gravy. It's coming back up. In fact, I can promise you, if you're feeling seasick, you won't even get it down. You want, you want something to nibble on. Bread, even dry bread, dry toast is better. Even cold dry toast with some jam on it. Something sweet is often very good for you. So you can get it if you're at a B&B, get an extra slice or two of toast, Cut it in half, put it in a napkin, stick it in your pocket. You'll be so grateful for something dry and sweet. And you want to nibble on it, like half, half a slice at a time, something like that. Some dry biscuits, but what they do say cures it. Not sure it cures it, but I've tried most things. Ginger biscuits. Take a packet of ginger biscuits, one or even half of one every now and then. And listen, I think you should all know about dehydration. If you keep being violently sick, Please, please make sure that you do drink some water. Just take a bottle of water with you, even if you only sip it. You don't have to have a gallon of coffee, a flask of tea, or like I did sometimes, vegetable soup. No, that comes up really easy though, I have to say. What you want is just a bottle of water and sip on it and nibble on a biscuit. If you're, little, if you're feeling a little bit better, being seasick will say, up, look at the horizon, just have a nibble, think I feel really great at the moment, and that's it, stay up. That's another tip for you. Let's get back to that fishing boat. Now then, if you let that same mackerel bait stay as close to the seabed, whether it's the reef or the wreck as possible, you should pick up not just the ling, but the hard fighting conger eel as well. Now years ago, they used to keep these all over the south coast of Britain. They go out and fish the wrecks. They used to sell them. Now, thankfully, there's less of a market for them and a lot of anglers tend to release them. I don't think they're the greatest eating thing. I wouldn't fancy eating one. In fact, I don't think I've ever eaten one. Oh my God. Do you feel sick, guys? Do you feel really queasy? Is it really this rough, Graham? No, is the answer to that. So here's a bait being prepared. I personally wouldn't cut with a blade coming towards me at all, ever. But uh, this angler is doing that. But he had a neat trick at the end. Takes a carcass off. He's just cutting behind the eyes there and across sort of the brain and there's loads of juice coming out of that. That's sort of the, if I can use the language, the bloodiest part of the head. And you've got the brain and smell. He's going for ling. He's got that green rig on again, look, you see. And, you know, several ling we call that day. And here's the old boy. Here's the cameraman who actually did put the camera down to do a bit of filming, even though the boat's rocking and rolling a little bit. Hooked up to a fish on the bottom. I do love conger eel fishing, I have to say, but I use a much larger bait trying for a bigger eel. It's nice to catch a hard fighting fish. And of course, one of the best cures 
Oh, Graham, no. Sorry, mate. Not only did you lose the shark, that you've actually lost a conger eel of the day as well. Anyway, one of the other anglers is hooked up here. Again, on Mark's boat, there's always something going on. Great boats to fish from. Get out there and give it a go. Hopefully, you know, you don't get seasick. And get out and enjoy that fishing. But here's Graham again. So there you go. A few tips that will hopefully might even cure any seasickness you've got. Look, some people are sort of prone to be seasick. I've been seasick on big ferries, big boats, everything. Not on my own boat because I've got the keys, I can go home. If you're on a charter boat, that's tough. You're going to have to stick it out there. Best, as I say, to take all the little remedies you can. Be careful what you do. And guys, enjoy your fishing out there because that's what it's all about. <laughs>